Hi, I'm Jolly, host of the Jolly Abraham Show. And today we are continuing a series called Freedom Fighters. A freedom fighter is someone who takes part in a violent struggle in order to overthrow their government and win their freedom. Over the course of the series, I'm gonna be talking with numerous brave, bold, and resilient women freedom fighters who have indeed been a part of a struggle, whether it is emotional, mental, physical, or spiritual, they have overcome and are now living free. My next guest is the bold and beautiful freedom fighter, Mrs. Benicia Hoffman. Now, Benicia is a recent college graduate from California State University, earning a business administration degree with a concentration in marketing. Benicia recently decided to live in her truth by sharing her story of alopecia. She hopes to bring awareness to this disorder by helping children and women alike feel confident again. She is an aspiring author and hopes to publish a children's book on alopecia in the near future. In her spare time, she enjoys health and wellness and researching possible cures for alopecia. She resides in the Sugarland, Texas area with her four children and supportive husband. You can find her on social media at B Hoffman on Facebook and Cute Bald Chick on Instagram. Welcome to the show, Venetia. How are you, dear? Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So good to have you. I'm so excited to share your story. Thank you. So good to be here. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> welcome. So, Venetia, I'd love to just dive right in. Um, so, talk to me about, so clearly you have alopecia. How was it growing up? Uh, like, what were some of the messages you received, uh, maybe about beauty, fashion, appearances, uh, growing up as a young girl? Um, well, growing up, um, my mom always taught me basically to be yourself. Um, your beauty doesn't define you. Um, but of course, as a child, you know, it's um, you, you're, you're wanting to blend in. I wanted to be like others. Um, so I would say it was very hard, you know, having alopecia and trying to hide it for so long. I got it. Um, I had my first episode at 11 and it kind of went on and came back and went on and came back throughout my years. But um, yeah, it was, it was definitely challenging. So can you define alopecia for our viewers who just may not know what it is? Alopecia is an autoimmune disorder. Um, my story isn't like anyone else's, you know, um, story, like every autoimmune disorder is different, um, whether it's lupus or anything, um, it's, it's basically depending on your immune system and how your immune system is affected by your immune system. You know, um, alopecia areata um, is basically my body fighting my hair follicles. Okay. Okay. So, so your mom taught you, you know, accept who you are, however you look, you're beautiful. Uh, what about any siblings, aunts and uncles, or, or anyone in your community? Was that the same message that you received from everybody? Yeah, well, actually, yes. But um, surprisingly, like many people in my community or my family didn't know I had alopecia. It was just a um, kind of a secret, you know, with my, with my intermediate family and within my household. Um, I told a couple close members and of course they were very supportive and, you know, um, you're beautiful, you know, and they went wig shopping with me and took me to, um, I think when I was about 19, 18, 19, 19, actually, when I had my first child, um, all my hair came out and, um, my mom took me to the hair club for men. Have you heard of it? Yeah, yeah. The hair club for men. And I spent quite a few hundred dollars and they made me a wig. And I felt, you know, of course, beautiful again. But, um, and I, of course, you know, you're just wanting to blend in. But um, within my community and outside friends, whatever, they didn't know. No one had a clue. Okay. So you said you felt beautiful again when you had this wig. So what were, what were, what were some of the messages that you internalized about beauty as a young girl? If you can remember that far, what were some of the things that were, were said? Um, or, or you said to yourself rather. Um, 
Let me see. I, I wanted I wanted to be like others. Okay. I think um, that's basically what all young people want to be like, as they want to look like, like right now, you know, everyone's trying their hardest to look like the Kim Kardashians and the Nicki Minaj's, you know, of the world, um, the social media models. I just wanted it to look like other people. Um, it's hard to stand out, you know, it's hard. So um, I, I knew that my beauty came from within. So, no, so, you know, of course, I've always been beautiful on the inside, yeah. but um, I wanted to also be beautiful on the outside and what I and others felt beautiful would be. And so what did you think beauty, beauty was hair-wise? Was it long hair? Oh, yeah, beautiful beauty is, you know, your crown and glory is your hair, you know, like you have to have long hair, short hair, you no, know, bald headed girls, no, you know, that they're not it. It's like, um, especially within the black community, um, light skinned, okay, beautiful long hair, you know, colored eyes, like that's beautiful. And um, and you know, um, unfortunately, that's I mean, of course, I couldn't be light skinned, but I could have the long hair, you know, um, I could have the 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 facade of what I thought beauty should be and what others thought, you know, beautiful should be. Sure. And um, were there any were there any symbols of beauty that you looked up to? I know you said now it was like you know Kim K, Nicki Minaj, but back then, did you look to anyone that you were like, "Ooh, I want to be like her," or she's got you know pretty hair, whatever? You know, um, back in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my era. Right. Um, <laughs> um, I would say beautiful models such as. Tyra Banks, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, beauty, um, and she was really, you know, big back in the '90s. Naomi Campbell, yeah. Um, there was also this um, model girl. Um, what was her name? She was really big in the '90s. Um, Alec, Alec Wet, I think her name is. Beautiful okay. black Sudanese model with high cheekbones, and she oh. had a bald head. Yes, 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 high cheekbones and a bald head. And I just thought she was amazing. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at her rocket. And she was rocking it, you know, down the runway and just being so confident. And um, I looked up to her. So now let's talk about your journey with alopecia. How did, when did it start? You mentioned at age, I want to say 11, you had mm -hmm. your first episodes, but talk, take us through that journey. Um, how did it start? How did it affect you? Okay, sure. Okay, so around the age of 11, I had, a, um, I would say, a traumatic shift in my life. My father died. Oh, wow. And not only did my father die, um, I moved from Texas to California. It was, so it was a major shift in life. Sure. So, um, you know, my mom just wanted to take me out of my, you know, atmosphere and so something new you know something fresh no uh, memories that would you know make me sad or whatever so we moved to Oakland Cleveland Texas to Oakland California <laughs> wow big change yeah so um so around 11 I would say maybe 12 around that time um my mom was combing my hair and she noticed um like a, a quarter size bald spot in the middle and um Someone like a family member had did my hair earlier that day, and she was like, "That girl must have cut a plug out your hair, you know? <laughs> she must be jealous." <laughs> and she, I think she asked her. She was like, "No, it was already there, but I didn't notice it, and she had just noticed it." Anywho, so um, um, we went to some doctors at that time, mid nineties. I think it was maybe something it wasn't new of course it's just many doctors didn't know about it they were just like I don't know check her eating habits um maybe she's stressed because of her father you know such and such anyhow it grew and came back grew and came back and you know um for like the next I would say six or seven years it was back it was fine um when I was I got pregnant at 19 actually I had my baby at 20 I got pregnant at 19 and at 20 years old, um, all my hair came off, like completely. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was completely bald. And um, I went to hair club for men, they made me brand new. 
<laughs> and then um, I, I had like a child every three to four years. So hair came back. I wore wigs, you know, in between time. And when I was like 24, I had my second daughter. My hair came out again. Now, sorry to interrupt. So did all your hair come back with each, like after each kid and then all of it went away or was it just some of it came back? Um, 20 came, one, one, yes. So 20 came out by 24, 23, it came, my hair came root through back at the, right after the birth of my second daughter, the 24, it came out again. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so it came out again, just my, all my hair came out and then, um, it slowly started to grow back where I could like hide it. Like I was able to braid it, um, and cover bald spots. Okay. Um, so, you know, I just braided around it and I pinned it up and bunned and everything and cover like back patches, patches that was everywhere. So, no, um, so nobody um, can. Right. No one knew, no one. And then, um, around 20, I don't know, eight, I had my son and, um, his hormones or something. It took my hair all the way off, like everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere, okay. it was, everywhere was, and I had universal you know, lattice at that point. Um, that's basically where you're bald completely on your body. Okay. And, um, and that was devastating. Um, because at that time I was, I was just getting married actually. And um, my husband had no idea. He knew that I had alopecia. Okay. He didn't know to the extent. I, I think at the time um, he didn't know, he hadn't heard of alopecia. So he went Googling it and he found all this research and stuff and pictures and he had no idea about it. So I introduced it to him, but he still hadn't seen me. You know, he didn't know about me completely. Because you were still wearing the wigs and everything. Even okay. to sleep, girl. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, working out. I, yeah, I was so insecure about it. So I wore my wigs all the time. And um, and then with my fourth child, it, and that's now, it came out completely again. Like I had no hair. And um, just like last year, I would say I didn't have eyebrows or eyelashes. Okay. Like it's still just, you know, growing back. Um, but the hair on my head is, you know, I'm still bald underneath here. So um, um, let me see, fast forward to now, that's my, my, my fourth child is now four years old. So um, my hair hasn't grown back since her. Um, I have little specks of hair on my legs, which is fine, I don't need no hair over there. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's but, good in a sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, um, so yeah, it's just steady growing back a little by little, um, but I still have no hair on my head. So, um, and that's, that's my story. I think other people are different. Sometimes people's hair grow back. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, I think it depends on your immune system and your hormones and how um, your body reacts to your body. Now, if it's okay with you, can we see your beautiful bald head? Of course, of course. So are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Woo wow, looks gorgeous. You, you do not want to be wearing a wig, girl. I'm being serious. <laughs> you look so beautiful. Thank you. I'm gonna take my earring off. Actually, that can get fell out. Okay. No problem. Wow. Well, you are rocking your bald head. Let me tell you that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So yeah, this is me. This is me. This is me in full flesh and natural. And yes. this is how I um um, choose and start to walk around daily. So what made you decide to, you know what, I'm no longer wearing wigs or, or have you decided that? Do you wear wigs or, or do you walk around bald everywhere? I'm still deciding. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still deciding. It's, I think um, it's a daily um, battle for me, honestly. Um, just the security of blending in, you know, sure. that's still something I fight with constantly. Um, you know, um, I would say people stare, you know, of course people stare, little kids stare, <laughs> grown ups stare. Um, so it's still something that, that bothers me if people staring, yeah. but um, I'm dealing 
dealing with it. I'm dealing with it daily. Just last year, I came out on social media and I rebuilt myself to my social media world and everyone. And actually, my husband actually saw it on, on social media the first time. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my goodness. He had to find out on social media about his wife. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He saw it on social media the first time. <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and, I re and I got so much support, you know, from my um, social media world and uh, my family and everyone, best friends and everybody near and far. And the support has been amazing. Yeah. So, so what made you come out of the closet, so to speak, last year? What was it? God. Really? I would say God. God, um, you know, it came to a point, I would say 2020 was a whole, you know, that's it. Yeah, and um, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, um, buying wigs and buying wigs can be really expensive. And I was just like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Like, what is the purpose for oh. me to be bald? Yeah. I started talking to God and I was just thinking, God, why, why, why me? Why am I bald? Why don't I have glorious hair like everyone else? Um, what's my purpose? Mm -hmm. And then he said to me, you're, 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 you are my purpose. You are, you are set apart. If I wanted you to blend like everyone else, and I would blend you. I would have made you with glorious hair. I didn't make you with glorious hair. You are chosen to raise awareness for alopecia. Wow. And that's what I am reluctantly, but choosing to do, you know, um, and I, I just hope that my, my living isn't in vain. You know that song by Clark Sisters, I'm not sure if you heard it, but it's called, I think it's called, Is My Living in Vain? You know, are you, are you living or just existing? You know, are you wasting your time here? Um, are you really walking the path God ordained for you? And, um, and I was just thinking, I don't want my living to be in vain. I want to help people. And if I'm here on this earth to help somebody feel confident about their, their looks, their beauty, then so be it. I'll sacrifice my, my confidence, you know, whatever for someone else. Because I mean, the people that matter won't care. And if they care, they don't matter. That's right. That's beautiful. I love that. That's so good. I love how you said that. God said, you are my purpose. And that's absolutely right. Thank you. Know? you. Yes. How has God transformed you through your loss of hair? How, have, how has your mindset changed from what you thought about beauty and hair when you were younger or teenage years to having now lost your hair of being a mother, being a wife, being a woman, how has your mindset changed? Um, I would say maturity. I grew up, um, I, I became, I'm still becoming, I would say powerful in my words mm. and my confidence. Um, uh, um, setting an example for my children is important. Um, making them believe and hopefully they're listening and looking at me to, understand that not one person is the same and everyone is different. And um, especially at a um, time where, and it's always been a time, especially in kids' life, where bullying is such a big deal. You know, don't bully someone because they have, because they're different, because they have short hair or long hair or are big or tall or whatever it may be. Um, I, I want to raise my children um, to be, those people in the world that um, can teach other people how to be, you know, confident in themselves and, and just be prominent people in the world. You understand? Yeah. Um, I would say I matured. I, I've grown um, confident, especially more confident than when I was when I was a kid. Wow. You know? And how do you think uh, we can maybe teach our kids to be confident? Like what, now that you've been through what you've been through, what are you teaching your kids about confidence? What, what true confidence means? Be yourself. 
um, my children, I, I, um, I go pick them up from soccer games or um, school or whatever. And I'm asked my, my son, uh, my 10 year old DJ. And um, I'm like, DJ, do you mind if I don't put my wig today or I don't wear a, a scarf or a hat to come pick you up from school or soccer practice? He's, he's always like, mom, be yourself. Wow. You're beautiful. Be yourself, mom. Wow, your kids are saying that to you. My 10 year old, right? Wow. Yeah. Be yourself. And, um, and I think that's the, that's the motto or that's the slogan that many people should live by. Be yourself, be who you are, whatever that may be, be it. Yeah, I love that. Speaking to that, uh, I know when I look through your Facebook feed, you have a common saying uh, or you have your own saying that says, own your ish. Now, can you <laughs> speak to what that ish means? What does that mean? Ish. Ish is your, um, I'm not sure if I can say it, but ish is your, your shit. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, <laughs> whatever your, your, your ish may be, you know, whether um, it's alopecia or you may be taller than you want to be or sh shorter than you want to be or larger or skinnier. You know, um, some pe people have um, um, insecurities. Um, right now, there's like this the eyes challenge on social media. I'm not sure if you've seen it, uh -huh. but um, it's like these big, beautiful eyes. And sometimes I, I've seen it. Social media introduces me to so much diversity of people, you know, and there's like these different color eyes, okay. like whatever it be like one brown eye, one blue eye. There's, um, and it's called a heterochromia, heterochromia, I believe it's called. Okay. And those people are owning their ish. I have never seen such beauty before. That would probably be something I would frown upon, I would say, and as beauty as a child, but they're owning their ish. And I love it. And I think it's so beautiful. So only your ish is being who you are, however God made you. You be that, however that may be. Wow. I love that. It's so true. I remember um, watching a, a, a like a makeup show on Netflix and this a beautiful young girl, she had a port wine stain that took up half of her face. Oh, yeah. And yeah. instead of like being ashamed about something she couldn't even control, she was just born that way. She mm -hmm. just to turn it into a beautiful piece of art and she just rocked it, right? Yeah. She glitter on it yeah. and she would camouflage it and just do so many cool things with makeup. And I was like, wow, that's so beautiful. So I think exactly. she, she was there was a model on, um, I might, oh, I forgot her name, but she was on America's Next Top Model. Oh. And she had these, I forgot the, um, the disorder, but it's like those light splotches everywhere. Okay, like, uh, I think it's vitiligo. Yes. Uh, Okay. Yes. She, um, that's another own your ish. She's a beautiful model, beautiful. And she has these blotches throughout her entire body. And she's, I think a supermodel right now and she's owning her ish. That's, that's, that is basically what I, what on your ish is. However God made you, however you may be, you be so bold and confident and shine bright like a diamond, boo. Okay. <laughs> own it. Okay. I love it. You know, you having gone through alopecia, what has it revealed to you about yourself that you didn't know necessarily was down inside of you or that God, God um, made inside of you? What did alopecia reveal about who you were and who you are? Bold. When I was a kid, and I still kind of am, um, I, I would say most people would see me as being shy. I was the kind of person that was shy to the background. Um, I wouldn't talk to anyone um, that I didn't necessarily know. Um, like, you know, I would say wearing my wigs, I, I wanted to blend in to look like everyone else because I didn't want to stand out. I don't want you to see me yeah. um, in most instances anyway. And I would say now, um, I'm standing out, um, being bold, being courageous. Yes. Um, um, it's like a sudden burst of fire down in me that yes. wants to raise awareness and make everyone else feel better, you know, feel more confident, feel beautiful. Um, it's, it's hard to explain, but I just feel so amazing, you know, um, 
sharing this this um, disorder that I may have. And I would say maybe 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I never would have imagined I would be just walking around, you know, bald. I, yeah. I never would have imagined. So I know for certain, and I'm still praying on it, God continues to move me and um, grow me each and every day. And I am just becoming, I know for myself, um, amazing at it, <laughs> but he's, he's continuing to work on me. He's continuing to, and I never would have imagined that I would be um, walking around like this today. Mm, yes. And what, what do you now value? What do you now feel is important about what you've learned about life and others having gone through what you went through? Um, what do I now value? Yeah. What do you value that's maybe different? Um, life. Life. Um, my time. Um, my example of beauty. Mm. Um, my children and how they see in their vision on life mm. um how my husband views me yeah. um I, I would say life is too short life is too, too short to hide from yourself yeah you know um i think i said earlier like why what people that matter don't care and those that care don't matter don't spend your time and your life hiding away from something that is bothering you or, or, or you're hiding behind when you can just let your light shine mm -hmm. through life. Don't let your life be in vain. Don't let your walk here on earth be just a walk, you know, live through it. Yes. Don't just exist, right? But actually live. Yes and live life to the fullest. And, and mm -hmm. that, my friend, is what you're doing. I love everything that you stand for. I love that you are absolutely owning your ish and that you have fought for just freedom of being, freedom from judgment, from what other people think, and you are standing in who God created you to be. It's beautiful. Thank it's you. Beautiful Thank you so see. much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, and folks, if you love this story, you can definitely connect with Benicia. I'll have her uh, ways to connect with her via social media down in the show notes below. And if you liked this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with someone you think will be blessed by it. And Benicia, before we go, I'd love to just ask you one more thing. I'd really love for you to just fill in this blank, okay? Freedom to me means. Freedom to me means um, boldness, living, being free, um, being open, open-minded. I have a lot of blanks, right? <laughs> yeah, that's one. But, but basically being free just means being you, being, um, being whoever you are. Yes, I love it. Thank you so much, Benicia, for being here. You are such an inspiration, such a joy, and you, I'm, I'm just so in awe of you. So thank you for sharing your story. Thank you so much for having me, Jolly. It's been amazing. Thank you for allowing me to share my story. You're welcome. All right, folks, I will see you in the next video. Take care, Benicia. Thank you.